Welcome to College Football Playoff Selection Show, presented by AT&T 5G. Uncertainty has engulfed the entire season, but today is a day for judgment. Selection day for the college football playoff. Data and debate, metrics and merit, questions, circular logic, perhaps some exasperation, but also cornerstones of clarity. Alabama and Clemson, the definitive programs and rivals of the playoff era, certain to be ensconced at one and two. But the other two spots? Well, Notre Dame split a pair with Clemson, but yesterday's blowout loss at the hands of a full-strength Tiger team dredged up memories of the Irish being overmatched against the elite. Ohio State looks to part undefeated Big Ten champion, but the Buckeyes have played three fewer games than the other undefeated team in their own state. And their entire schedule is shorter than Texas A&M's current SEC winning streak, which started after a loss to number one Alabama, a game in which the Aggies were completely overmatched. Look, all of these arguments are valid, but at some point the selection committee has to make a decision. And that point is now to find out who's in. Uncertainty. If that's been the word of this year, the truth is, it's their word every year. Every season, every game, through promise and pain. For all they've fought against to have this second in time to know how they rank and where they stand. It's why they've persevered and played, continued and competed. Conclusive and decisive. Brutal and final. If we can't play in this league and be in the playoff, something's wrong. To be the answer to the question, the proof to the doubt, the fact to the theory. The college football playoff. Who's in? This might be the toughest job any committee's had in the seven-year history of the college football playoff. There is Gary Barta. He is the chair of the selection committee. He will join us to explain the logic, explain the rationale. Now the four teams are chosen a little bit later on. 13 people in a room on even schedules. Pandemic impacted the season from start to finish. But through it all, Clemson emerges again as party. ACC champions. There's likely to be a socially distanced pizza party that has become a tradition at Clemson. Pizza party is synonymous with the Tigers on Selection Day these days as they await to see where they are. Likely, they will be... Number two, Clemson, the ACC champions, conference championship games on Saturday at least provided another data point for that selection committee to evaluate. Ohio State was tested. They pulled away when they started giving the ball to Trey Sermon. What a performance from him. I mean, an all-time leading rusher in a single game in Ohio State football history. There's been some incredible backs and a good response. 331 yards for Sermon. Then with Trevor Lawrence back, Clemson took care of Notre Dame with ease, 34-10. Lawrence, the MVP of the ACC championship game, six in a row. And then Alabama and Florida. What a shootout last yeah, night. Yeah, that Jess. three-headed monster for the Tide. Unbelievable. Mac Jones, he basically secures his Heisman bid. Najee Harris running and catching. Devontae Smith, incredible. And then Joey Cincinnati. Conference champions, first time since 2009, one at the gun. I've had so much respect for what Cincinnati's been able to do. Not a lot of respect in the room, dropping a couple spots the last couple weeks, but they've been an outstanding team. And we have reporters everywhere. Chris Lowe is at Alabama. Crimson Tide expects to be number one. Marty Smith, we'll see if he gets a slice of pizza at Clemson coming up. Gene Wojciechowski <laughs> rocking the great orange tie as the Buckeyes win. And we have news from Ohio State that we'll share momentarily. Jen Ladd is in South Bend, Chris Budden in College Station, and Holly Rowe in Cincinnati as the Bearcats 